Hello and welcome back to The Note. We've had a disappointing start to the year. Stock markets are generally down and obviously some emerging market currencies are down very significantly. But where are we heading? How can we make some sense out of a lot of noise that we've had over the last few weeks? With me now to try to discern some patterns uh, in the macroeconomy and global markets is Credit Suisse's Head of Strategy Research, Sean Shepley. Sean, thanks very much for joining me on the note. Let's start by taking a look at a chart that uh, you've produced on uh, global industrial production and what you call industrial pro production momentum. Take me through what we're seeing here. So what we're looking at here is the rate of growth of the global economy as measured by industrial production. Right. And we focus on industrial production because it's the most cyclical part of the global economy and we find that it ties very closely into markets. And if we just focus in on this most recent mm. uh, phase that we've had here, back in 2012, since then we've had a phase of strong recovery and that has helped encourage investor risk appetite to be really pretty buoyant. And if you look at where we started the year, I think it helps explain how investors really had a pretty benign view of where markets were going to be. Right. There was general optimism about equities. And we've now had a bit of a wobble. Right. And we're starting to see some signs of softening, particularly in the US, which was actually expected to be the lead economy. And that has reawakened some concerns about possible downside risk. OK, and as I understand it, that's true of other economic indicators as well. In, in general, surprises have been negative for the last few weeks rather than positive. They have, absolutely right. Yes. OK, now let's map that across to uh, investors risk appetite. This is a chart going back to 1981 uh, and it appears to suggest uh, A, that people are losing their risk appetite recently, but B, this is certainly not compared to things in very recent memory, not a, a major panic that we're, we're talking about at the moment. That's absolutely right. So if we look at some of the highlights here, we can see the 2008 crisis, we can see the Euro existential crisis back in 2011. Which, in, which interestingly was actually even worse for risk appetite than, than post Lehman. I said, well, I people were just conditioned to be nervous post Lehman. I think, I think there was a sense in which, yes, post Lehman, people were looking out for trouble right. and the Euro area crisis potentially threatened a shock to uh, the global economy at a time where it was already weak. Right. And I think because of that, you had an extreme degree of concern about the potential downside risk right. and the investor base en masse sought to flee from any uh, mm. type of risky asset. And that, as we can see from the chart, was the local low. And if you remember back to that trough in industrial production men momentum that we saw, mm. since then, we had a pretty benign phase in which risk appetite was improving. Mm. And at the beginning of this year, it was, if not at a high, uh, certainly associated with what investors generally thought to be an environment which was favourable for taking risk. Now, are people now worried about uh, monetary policy or are they concerned about economic indicators? Or is this, I, I mean, how predictive is this measure? Is it, do so, you know, so it'll get worse. So I think what the investor base uh, is predominantly concerned about is that we are entering into a phase where monetary policy, having been incredibly supportive for mm. the last 18 months to two years, is now entering into a phase where it is going to be a bit less supportive. So uh, we see that uh, the Fed is in the process of tapering its yeah. asset purchases, having been committed to uh, sustaining them for as long as was necessary. And although that's not the same as a tightening of monetary conditions, nonetheless, it, it uh, uh, provides a backdrop that is a little less uh, helpful than uh, people have been used to. And that is driving uh, part of the deterioration that we're seeing, along with the loss of momentum in uh, the global economy. OK, now let's finally map this onto the area that people have been most worried about, which is emerging markets. This is your measure of volatility of the way in which emerging markets tend to move together. Now, as I understand this, this suggests that actually this, this latest emerging market sell-off isn't that discriminant. People are still treating emerging markets as one big entity to trade into or out of. That's absolutely right. So what we do is we look at volatility across 10 different emerging market uh, foreign exchange rates. And what we do is we strip out some common factors that normally explain the behavior of emerging market foreign exchange volatility. Right. And in particular, we look at 
the volatility of the Australian dollar, right. and we look at a general measure of credit spreads. And then what we do is we look at that, uh, those measures uh, for each of the individual currency pairs, and then look at what's left over, the residuals from those regressions, and how closely they co-move. And so what you can see, again, if we're looking at the beginning mm. of this year, a reasonably benign environment, the market said that on the whole, these uh, 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 emerging market currencies were not particularly uh, closely related. And then we had a series of shocks that drove up the market's concern right. about the general nature of emerging market risk. And even though that's come off a little bit just over the last week or so, you can see here from, from the chart that it remains an area where people are concerned about correlation risk in emerging markets. Okay, sure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that tour of the world. I suppose the main points to take from this are that, yes, there are real underlying reasons why people are getting more nervous, and there is reason to fear that it could get worse before it could get better. The other very important point to note is that by comparison with many uh, incidents in very recent memory. This is still not a particularly major incident. It's certainly not a crisis.